In this project, we're gonna build a beautiful set of screwdrivers. I'm just kind of tired of using these multi-tip stubby screwdrivers or something longer or the plastic handled ones and I wanted something gorgeous in my shop. I have the Stanley 2702 that I got from my grandfather that I just love to use. The handle's great, fits in my hand really well, it's great length and I love that it's got this little stubby part here in the front where you know where to put your fingers and to where to grip it all the time. Now, I love this, but what I don't love about it is it rolls. And that's where this set of screwdrivers takes it to the next level. We've got a number one, a number two Phillips, and then three different size flatheads. And I also have a really beautiful piece of Coco Bolo here. Um, I think this is gonna be gorgeous for the handles. Of course, you can always use a different type of wood. So over at the jointer, the first thing we're gonna do is square up two sides of our blank. So once I flatten one side and square up the other, I'm gonna start over at the bandsaw by setting my fence to just about an inch and a quarter. And then I'll rip a rough blank from that. And then at the table saw, I have my fence set at one and an eighth inches. And I'm going to make one pass with my squared up side against the fence. And then once that's cut, then I can turn that around and cut the other face. And with that, I'll come up with a nice four-sided square blank. And as you see here, I have two smaller blanks as well. And for these, I'll reset my fence an eighth of an inch less for one inch and do the same thing, and these two will be for my two smaller screwdrivers. Set our fence for five and a half inches and cross cut all these guys to five and a half inches long. So now that I have my five blanks for my five shafts, take our blanks and find center, grab your square, and get it into the 45 degree angle position here with our square. And you want to do that for both corners. Here at the router table, what we're going to do is take a 45 degree chamfer bit. Now when you do this, don't forget to install a pivot pin and use something that keeps your hands away like I am here. And as you can see here, I'm taking very shallow passes, removing just a little bit of material at a time until I get real close to that perfect octagon shape. And I'll first dial that in on my two smaller screwdriver handle blanks and then the larger three. Now once you've finished chamfering your different size handles, I got really close and I stopped. And I'm just gonna work on getting all these guys down so I have equal distances along all the facets, which means that they're a perfect octagon. Now this piece of cardboard here is really important. This is actually my template and you'll find this in the plans for this project. And what's great about this is you'll be able to take this up to the lathe and use it to determine that your curves are matching. After using a center punch on both sides, now it's time to lay out the actual blank itself. Now we're gonna be using this um, LFA 760 for the furrow on the larger handles. And the first thing I wanna do is take my furrow here and make a mark right where it ends. And then what I wanna do is come here and then make another mark right where I start my curve. Also mark where the bottom of the curve is. So let's head over to the lathe. Before we head over there, we wanna take a measurement. So I have my digital dial of calipers here and I'm gonna come in and take an inside measurement of the diameter, that's uh, 5.79, 5.78. And what I'm going to be going for here is just a little bit thicker than that. So what you see me doing here is taking my rougher, you can all use a bedan to do this as well. And I'm moving in slowly, rounding everything but that front part. And I'm working down, taking measurements every so often until I get really close to match the tenon to this brass pipe fitting that I'm using for my furl. So now we can take our piece out of the lathe 
And sure enough, I got it to the point where I can start to hand tighten it. I'm just gonna finish tightening this up. So now I'm gonna line up my marks here and I'm gonna take my finisher, which has this beautiful curve on it, and I'm gonna start working right down this mark right here and around to start to create my shape. Then I'm using my profile here to match. Now that I have a pretty close to a rough shape here in the front, what I want to do is take my scraper and actually start to turn this brass pipe fitting into a circle from an octagon. And as you can see, I've just about every single point's hit. There's some few flat spots, but we'll get that in a couple seconds. Turn on the lathe again, take a file, and start to flatten this out. If you're using one of these um, easy wood uh, tools, guys, here you can come in. The carbide tip here is definitely strong enough to cut this brass. Because I've done one already, I'm gonna bring it up and compare it. Um, this one's got a little bit less of a hump. This has more of a hump. So I'm gonna bring this down just slightly. And um, I'm actually gonna use the scraper to do that. The curve on it happens to match the curve here very well. And it allows me to get a nice, beautiful finish right here. So now what I wanna do is focus here on the back. Come in with either a badan or um, what I'm gonna be using is this uh, Easy Wood Tools rougher and I'm gonna start removing material to start to angle it and start to round this over using just the edge of it to create a round over in the back. So I'm gonna start with some 150 grit paper and start sanding everything that I turned. And then I'm gonna move up through my grits, 220, 320, and then I'm gonna move even higher on the brass itself, up through 800 and then to 1,000 grit. So before we even mark anything out here, I'm gonna take my shank and I'm gonna take my digital dial calipers and I'm gonna take a measurement. And for me, that measurement's 0 0.400 inches. Okay, so this line right here, it's one of the lines I drew as well as another right here. And I'm gonna take my digital dial calipers and I'm gonna sight down the middle because this is the hole I'm gonna drill in the center, but I need to drill two holes on the ends. I'm gonna find pretty much where I've got equal amounts of wood and draw a mark. Now this eighth inch drill bit is the perfect bit to remove material to create a hole for these wings right here. And uh, what's important about this is you want the bit edge here and right where that line is. We're here at the drill press now and um, what I did was I took some leather and I wrapped the handle in the leather and I'm using this um, vise here at the drill press to hold the screwdriver handle itself vertical and when I did that I also checked um, on multiple sides to see or try to at my best eyeball this for um, square to the table and square to the bit as well. There's some numbers on the shank itself and I wanna hide those. So I'm gonna kinda of bring this up here and figure out where those numbers will be hidden. I got my finger placed here, very, very technical of where the bottom of this wing would be. So um, I'm gonna be very technical here. Take my drill bit, bring it down so I hit my finger, and I'm gonna set my depth stop. So for me, that meant I zeroed out my digital um, depth stop up here. So now what I can do is drill out the two holes on either side here to create the space for the wings. So now I'm gonna switch bits out from the eighth inch to a 5 16th of an inch bit. Now I have a flag as you can see on here and that was from the previous screwdriver. So I'm gonna bring this over and drill a hole 5 16th of an inch right down the center. Next thing I wanna do is to 
get this nice and flush here in the front. To do that, I'm here at the sander. I have this jig here, which is a bench clamp that I use at my bench here. And I have it clamped down and squared to the sandpaper in the front. And I'm just gonna take the piece in here and slowly push in back and forth until I make this nice and flush in the front. And just take off the burr on the edge. And then over the table saw, I'm gonna cut the very end away. Then with some 220 grit paper, I'm gonna round this over. Then I have um, basically what I'm gonna call a little sanding uh, thing going on here. I got some 150 grit, I'm gonna start with that. Take even passes on all of my facets. Then some 220 grit paper. And then finally on some 320 grit paper. And then I'm even gonna hit the end here too. Then I'm gonna take my shank, I've put it in. And I'm just gonna press down on top of this screw to seat it. And it's time to move on to the smaller screwdriver. So here I've got one of those. All of these shafts have the exact same dimensions for this section. But what's different is everything in the front. We made a smaller blank. It's one inch um, in width all around. So that means we're going to use a slightly smaller brass pipe fitting. So since these are a little bit smaller in the front or significantly smaller, I want to scale down the screwdriver handle. Just like before in the last screwdriver set, um, I took time to get my handle um, vertical to the bit. Now what's different about this is that we're drilling basically the same distance. However, as you can see, you're staring straight down the screwdriver right now. And I have those two wings, one on the top and the bottom. And as you can see, they are right next to the metal of the brass. And as you can see, there's a little bit of w wiggle here. And that wiggle exists on purpose. And you'll see that if you've done the other two screwdrivers already, that has some wiggle in it as well. And that's gonna allow us to put our epoxy down in the center, put our shaft in, eyeball it, and get exactly what we want for how the shaft relates to the handle. And then just like before, I'll sand the handle up through the grits. It's time to attach our shanks, put some finish on, and then use our screwdrivers. So as you can see here, I have two bottles, the number two medium hardener, which means I'm gonna get about 30 minutes open time. Okay, so it's two parts resin to one part hardener. Then I'm gonna open up my oil and start putting some of this black oil inside of my resin. I'm gonna open up the hardener and add one part of hardener to bring it just about to the three line on my cup. And I'm gonna start getting some of this down the center of the shaft. Now I don't wanna put so much in that it's gonna overflow. So I gotta try to find some kind of a happy medium here. And the epoxy should act like a lubricant. So before it bubbles up and goes over, I'm gonna get some acetone out and take some uh, cloth, get some of that uh, epoxy that just came up off. So I've got some scrap plywood holding up another piece of scrap plywood that has some holes drilled into it. And um, I have some boiled linseed oil here. And what I wanna do is get my gloves on Take a clean cloth here and just fold it over. Grab a little bit of this boiled linseed oil and just start applying it to the handle. And as you can see, the cocoa bowl is just beginning to pop. Don't forget the end grain in the back of the handle. And once you think you got everything, put the handle back down, do the next one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of these, get a first coat on, then I'll come back and apply some more coats. Three is probably the max for what I need for these. So this is the last step in the entire process here. And so what I've done is I've taken some of my paste wax, put into this cloth here, and loaded up this cloth with paste wax in it. And as you push in, you squeeze in to the cloth, the wax is gonna come out and 
what I want you to do is just apply a nice coat to the entire handle and let it sit for about five, ten minutes or so um, to allow the wax itself to flash or to start to harden. And that's when we're going to just kind of buff it in and buff it out. And that's pretty much it for this project. Um, these guys look fantastic. I couldn't be any happier with how the screwdrivers came out. I'm really loving them and I can't wait to use them for the rest of my life.